In this video we're taking a look at effective annual rates using the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus financial calculator. Let's start by talking a little bit about effective annual rates. Sometimes our investment opportunities are going to offer us different compounding periods. For example, here we have three different savings plans, 8% interest compounded annually, 7.8% interest compounded quarterly, or 7.75% interest compounded weekly. Now, we know that the more frequently we compound our money, the faster it can grow. So weekly is better than annual compounding. However, we also know 8% is better than 7.75%. How do we decide which is better off? Do we take the lower interest rate and compound it more frequently? Or do we take the higher interest rate but compound it less frequently? The only way to do that is to make a comparison that is equivalent. And to do that, we use effective annual rates. Right here, we have the classic apples to oranges comparison. Once we move it to effective annual rates, we're comparing apples to apples. We've got an equivalent comparison. What the effective annual rate does is convert everything to its annual equivalent yield. So 8% compounded annually is already there. It's 8%, so we don't have to do anything. But what about 7.8% compounded quarterly or 7.75% compounded weekly? What are those equivalent to on an annual basis? There are a couple of ways to address that. One is to use a formula. Another is to walk through a function or module on your financial calculator. I'm going to walk through both of these just to give you an example of each. But the formula approach says that the effective annual rate is equal to 1 plus the nominal rate divided by the number of compounding periods M just stands for the number of compounding periods raised to the number of compounding periods subtract off 1. So in our example here 7.8 percent is our nominal rate and we're compounding quarterly so that gives us four compounding periods per year. So M is 4 and the nominal is 7.8 percent but when we're doing the formula the nominal rate has to be expressed as a decimal don't plug it in as 7.8 it's got to be 0 0.078 so when we set that up 1 plus 0 0.078 divided by 4 raised to the fourth power subtract off 1 now I mentioned one common mistake that people make is they'll use the percent instead of a decimal, 7.8 instead of 0 0.078. Another thing to be careful about is order of operations. For some of you guys this will come naturally. Some of you it may have been a while since you've had a math class. So remember, order of operations, say what's within parentheses first, and division comes before addition, so 0 0.078 divided by 4 plus 1. Raised to the fourth power, subtract off 1. And the last common mistake I see people make is rounding. A lot of times they'll want to round this off and say 0 0.078 divided by 4 is about 0 0.02. Well, that's actually 8%, not 7.8%. So any rounding error we make, we're going to magnify when we raise it to the exponent. So we want to be careful. Don't round things off. Carry out the full answer and get your final solution. Then you can round if you want to at the end. So let's go through that with our calculator. We've got our Texas Instruments BA2 Plus. Got a little bit of light flashing on the screen there, but hopefully that's readable. And we want to start out, remember, decimal. So 7.8% is 0 0.078. Divide by 4 gives us 0 0.0195. Now again, don't round that off to 0 0.02. Leave that as 0 0.0195. And now we're going to add the 1. So just plus 1. Let's go ahead. Plus 1 equals gives us 1.095. Now we're going to raise it to the fourth power. Take all of this to the fourth power. To do that, we're going to use the y to the x key on your calculator. The 1.0195 is your y. 4 is going to be your x, the four periods per year. So just press the Y to the X. Now it's waiting for you to enter the X, which is your 4. So just 4 equals 
gives you 1.0803. Subtract off your 1, and you're left with your final answer, 0.0803. And remember, that's in decimal terms, so the final answer is 8.03%. And normally we want to round that off to two decimal places in percentage terms. So not 8, not 8.0, but 8.03. Now you also may want to do this in your financial calculator. If you don't like formulas, you can use the financial calculator. The Texas Instruments, like the other financial calculators, has a module built in to solve for the effective annual rate. In order to activate that, you want to go to your interest conversion module. I've got this as yellow because it's a shift function and your shift key on your Texas Instruments BA2 Plus is yellow. It's the second function so just press second. And then the interest conversion down here, it's the shift of the 2 button. So now we've got into the interest conversion module and you can see a little on-screen display. Right now it's asking you for the nominal rate. So now you want to put in whatever the nominal rate is. Here it's 7.8 now we're going to plug that in as 7.8, not as a decimal, not 0 .078. We do 0 .078 with the formula. We're using the financial calculator. That nominal rate is 7.8. Now you can see enter, down, down. So we go back to our screen here. Press enter. Go down one. You can see now the on-screen display has EFF. That's our final answer, but we don't want to solve for it yet because we've got to tell it how many compounding periods there are. So we press that down arrow twice to get to the C slash Y screen. Now it's asking us for the number of compounding periods per year. That's our M. So we put that in. Quarterly is 4. So 4, enter, and then go back up to that effective screen. So you can see enter, up arrow. Now we're at our effective screen. Just like anything else with the Texas Instruments, once you're ready to get your final answer, you have to press that Compute, CPT, and there we go, 8.03%, same as we got before using the formula. I don't care if you use the formula or if you use your financial calculator. If you want to use both, you can do that as kind of a verification or a double check. should come out the same answer either way. So we have 8.03% is our effective rate for 7.8% interest compounded quarterly. For practice, I'd like you guys to go ahead and solve for the 7.75% interest compounded weekly. When you do that, it should come up with 8.05%. And which alternative would you prefer? We prefer higher rates of return. So assuming these are all the same risk, we want to have 7.75% interest compounded weekly. Now, it's not going to make a huge difference. These are all pretty close. But remember, some large corporations have millions of dollars, or in some cases even billions of dollars, in short-term investments. 0.02% may not be a big difference to you or I, but to a company like Microsoft or Apple, that can make a significant difference in their final cash flows available. So this walks you through effective annual rates. You can either use your calculator or the formula. Hopefully this makes the analysis a little bit easier.